Hello and welcome to our video on setting up priorities and the priority hierarchy in Trackit. First we'll go through setting up some priorities, go over the different settings that are involved in that, and then we'll show you the priority hierarchy and how that affects the priority that gets assigned to a new ticket in the Trackit system. So as you can see, I'm already logged into Trackit. I'm in the configuration section. If you don't remember how to get to that, it's very easy. Once you're in Trackit, you just click on the menu and then click on configuration. So first off, let's take a look at priorities. You can find that in the main list of configuration items here at the bottom. Or for a shortcut to that, if you just click on the lookups shortcut on the left, you'll see there are only a few lookups listed and priorities is one of them. So we're going to go ahead and click on priorities and look at that. You'll see there are five default priorities in my installation here. These priorities are fairly typical for most organizations. We have very low, low, medium, high, and critical. And you'll notice we've also prepended these with a number and a dash so they sort in this order in the drop down menu on a work order ticket. We'll go ahead and open one up just so we could take a look at it. So you have the name of the priority first, then you have a description of that priority. You can link it to the time zone that you're in and a work schedule if you want to respect that. This is really only important if it's a priority that has to respect a time zone. If it's something that has to be done at a specific time, no matter what time of the day it is, then you can leave the work schedule blank and the time zone doesn't even really matter because it's going to operate 24 hours a day. This check mark here adjusts the due date based on the assigned technician's schedule. If you check this, then that will impact how this due date is assigned to the actual ticket. So if we turn that on and the technician assigned to the ticket has a schedule defined, then the due date will take into account that technician's schedule. So let's say it's an hour before the technician is supposed to end their shift and a ticket comes in with this critical priority with a two hour duration. If this box is checked, it would calculate one hour on the current shift and then one hour into the technician's next shift. So you really would only want to use this for lower priority items. You have an option to mark a priority as inactive if it's something that you want to disable and not allow users to select anymore. So let's take a look at some of these default time settings at the bottom. The expected due duration is how many hours, minutes, and seconds from the time the ticket is logged until the time the due date is set for that ticket that's put in. So if it's 12 noon and somebody puts in a ticket that meets this critical priority, then the due date will be set two hours from then or 2 p.m. Expected fixed duration, this field is meant to give the end user requester an idea of when they think the ticket will be fixed or when they think the ticket will be resolved. And expected response is how long from the time the ticket is put in until you're expecting a response from the technician assigned to it. So I'm going to cancel out of this one and select one of the other ones just so you can see another example. So here's one that's very low priority. So you'll see this one has 40 hours. Now it's quite a long time, but that's more typical of a low priority issue. So we'll cancel out of this. So very simple to set up your priorities. So let's go take a look at the priority hierarchy. The easiest way to get to that is by selecting SLAs and business rules, and then under service level agreements, clicking priority hierarchy. You'll notice here there are four items in this list. There's category, location, department, and requester. There's also group selector. So one thing we need to understand first is that each of these items, categories, locations, departments, and requesters, each of these items can have a default priority in the Tracket system. So let's say we have a category for help desk tickets called network issues. So network issues might have a default priority of high. So that means anytime you enter a new ticket into the system, if you select network issues, it's automatically going to get a priority of high. Locations can also have a default priority. So can departments and so can requesters. The hierarchy shows which one is going to take precedence if there are conflicting priorities applied to a ticket. So if somebody puts in network issues for a category and that's a high priority, and let's say the department, for example, has a low priority as a default, well, those two things would conflict. So in that particular case, the network issues priority of high would win out because category has a higher priority. I mentioned the group setting here a moment ago. There is a different priority hierarchy for each group you create. So the system administration group has its own hierarchy. The help desk group has its own hierarchy. 
and any other groups that you create, they'll each have their own hierarchy. Now, if you want to change the order of these, it's pretty simple. You just click on the one you want to move and use the arrows on the right here to change it. And also keep in mind that these values, when you select a requester or a category or a location, for example, they have to actually have priorities for this hierarchy to actually make any difference. So if you pick a requester that doesn't have a priority and a category that does in a particular ticket, then obviously the priority that's assigned to the category will win out and show up on the ticket. Only in a case where a requester and a category, for example, both have an assigned priority, would this hierarchy come into play. So that is an overview of how priorities are defined in Trackit and how to utilize the priority hierarchy. For more videos in this training series, you can visit our documentation site at docs.bmc.com. If you forget where the documentation is, you can always click the help link in the upper right hand corner inside Trackit. Some other useful resources are the Trackit community, where you can talk with other Trackit users and support representatives about how to get the most out of your product. You can reach that site at community.trackit.com. You can also reach our technical support directly by visiting support.trackit.com. And for general product information, you can always visit trackit.com. Thank you for watching, and I hope this video has been helpful to you.